What's up guys, Larry Chen here. Welcome to another episode of Hoonigan Autofocus. We are at Bells and Vons, and this is kind of one of their bi-monthly meetups here that they do. The Corolla Hatchback Club is here. A lot of different cars showed up. Lewis brought his GC8. I brought my R32 GTR. We brought the our own Corolla Hatchback. And of course, my buddy JT brought out his awesome Sprinter Terreno Mango. But this car, this Toyota Starlet, I've wanted to feature for a long time. And my good buddy Angelo actually brought it. What's up? How are you? Hey, how you doing, guys? Good to good, see you. Good, good. Likewise, likewise. Beautiful Thanks for, day. Thanks for bringing this awesome car. And this is the thing. We've actually seen this um, over, I guess, the past couple years. You've been evolving it little bit by little bit. And you're kind of showing it in different stages. Right now, in this current stage, it's uh, at a good stopping point, and we actually really are excited. We're actually really excited to feature it. Great, thank you. Thanks yeah. for having us. So, what is this? What year is this it's, Toyota? It's a 1981 Toyota Starlet, uh, also known as KP61 because of the model. It's a little fun car that originally had, I think, 50, 56 horsepower when it first came out. So, pretty economical car. <laughs> so what made you actually want to build this car? Well, you know, I've had this car for over 15 years. Um, I did a few track times with it when I previously had it when it was purple. Uh, it was primered black and, uh, you know, we trashed it around and it was a good fun car to, to drive around. It, it originally had a ported head, ported polished and running 40 uh, Weber carbs. It was quick. And, um, you know, my son is into cars, he loves cars. Eventually we started to do, you know, working on this and aside from the other cars that I've had. And he said, well, dad, I like the Starlet. Why don't we start fixing this? So slowly we did and, you know, we went through the changes. My son got a little older, he got more involved. We actually picked up the motor. So this is actually a, a son, a father and son project. It's a father, a father and son project. Unfortunately, he's not here. He's got some stuff going on right now, but uh, I know he wants to be here for sure. This thing is so cool. Let's just kind of do like a quick walk around on it. Sure. So it's it's like a street slash track build, right? Yes. Obviously, because it's fully caged. Yes, it's, it's actually meant to be a track car, but with the way it looks right now, <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it's more of a street track and, and, and show. Yeah, it's kind of like a show quality build here it almost looks to me at least it's like you modified it period correct in a way yes we did we wanted to make sure that uh starting from the wheels um body work the n2 kit you know it, it's very 80s as far as the actual true build we were able to score a authentic trd head specifically for the toyota started back in the race days oh wow okay we'll get to the engine yes. bay but <laughs> All the little things, I mean, here's the thing, guys. In a lot of local meets here in SoCal, uh, Angelo brings out his awesome cars. You actually have a, a Morris, Morris Coupe? Uh, I have a, a Morris, Morris. Uh, Morris Mini uh, Morris Clubman. Mini. Okay, it's not called a Morris Cooper, it's Morris Mini. It's actually a Clubman. Oh, Clubman, okay. Yes. So I actually really like that build too. I think it looks awesome. Maybe we'll get a chance to feature that, as well as your RX-3. This guy has a lot of cool builds. I can't even keep up with them, but um, it's just one of those things where we've never really had a chance to kind of take a closer look. And right now, since we're doing our little uh, bi-monthly meetup at Bells and Bonds, they actually restored my 240Z. So I figured it would be cool to kind of bring out some different rides from different eras, from all different walks of life. Let's take a look at uh, some of the details. Like, tell me about the wheels. The wheels are uh, OG Watanabe RS Magnesiums. They are 14 nine and a half in the front and uh, 14 10 and a half in the rear. Uh, offset, I believe, are negative uh, 22s all the way around. So what year are these? These are the 80s era uh, of specific uh, Watanabes. Huh. So that's so the thing. It's pretty old school. That's like the theme on this car is all period correct or as much as you can. I mean, you even have, are these real Watanabe lugs too? Those are real Watanabe uh, titanium lugs. <laughs> wow. Okay, premium. Those yeah. are pretty expensive. Uh, huh? Thanks to uh, a couple of people that helped me out. 
We were, we were able to source it. From my understanding, it was one of the first ones here in the States. Wow. And um, of course, you have some uh, good braking power compared to stock. You have a Willwood uh, brake setup here. Yeah, um, we redid the whole suspension also. It's the Technotoy tuning all the way around. Uh, it's the Hachi front-end conversion. We're running the Willwoods, uh, brake setup, uh, coilovers. Uh, pretty much the whole gamut of everything with uh, Techni Technotoy tuning. So it's basically like a A86 Corolla front end. It, that is correct, yes. Front subframe. It's pretty much the same. Yeah. And then the rear, is it still, or is it uh, solid? Uh, it, uh, yeah, it's still a solid axle, but I'm running um, a four link on it as well. So did this actually come with uh, drum brakes in the rear then? Yes, they still are drum brakes and depending on the future build um, I have a little bit something different that eventually it's gonna come out and we're probably gonna have to replace the uh, the rear end as well. Hmm. Tell us a little bit about the over fenders. The over fenders are uh, the N2 style uh, TRD kits. They do come out about four and a half inches or so uh, to kind of cover the, uh, the tires appropriately. Uh, again, the tires are in the back 14, 10 and a half, so they're pretty wide and 14 and a half in the front. So it's got good grip, good balance. Wait, so these are real to TRD parts? No, actually, no, they're not. These are actually replicas, but I have sourced the original ones. So we're probably going to be doing that whole entire shift and doing a little bit of different uh, color accents. Hmm. I love the little touches like this is I think period correct too right yes Solex <laughs> yeah Solex locks very cool okay let's look at the back here tell me about the exhaust the exhaust is a custom exhaust uh, that was done by uh, one of the fabricators uh, it, we're running the Borla exhaust I'm a Borla fan I've always liked them ever since uh, I started racing in the early 90s let's check out the hood check out the engine bay Man, this thing just looks right. I love it. I like the TRD badge. Thank you. Thank you. So did you, ha is this different? Uh, no, it's still the stock grill, but we just added on the uh, TRD. And this? Uh, it Front. came with the whole body kit. So oh, okay. I bought the whole body kit and came from Portugal, from Angelo, Angelo Philippe. Surprisingly, there's a lot of room in here. I guess the motor is tiny though. It's a little 1.3 uh, motor. Uh, it's a little engine that can. As far as the history, thanks to my buddy, JT, Joel Tan. <laughs> With his contacts, we were able to source out this specific race motor for the Starlet. Um, believe it or not, it's a TRD uh, 4K specific race motor for the Starlet. It's a TRD head that we were able to get from the Philippines. So this whole motor was actually brought in inside a luggage. What? Really? We took it apart. Uh, put the we put the uh, the block inside our luggage. Uh, the head was on a different luggage. Pistons and everything else were all scattered in two luggages. Uh, the block was about 92 pounds, and I ended up having to pay a little extra for weight. But you know, there's some issues at customs, but eventually they let us through. It's pretty cool, and I told this the guy. Okay, okay, let me get this straight. <laughs> you bought this stuff in the Philippines, and you actually went to the Philippines with your family? Yes, that is correct. And yeah. you, you <laughs> smuggled this in to the U.S. in your in your suitcase? In a suitcase. Did, wait, did you just surround it with clothing or what? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, clothing wrapped up, bubble wrapped and everything. Made sure we cleaned it up. Okay, so what did they say at customs? They're like, what is this? Is this an engine? Okay. Now I'm just gonna have to do a routine check on the rest of the bag. Why is it so heavy? What are, where are you taking this? And I said, oh, well, I'm bringing it back to the States. And at first the uh, customs uh, person said that, well, you can't be bringing this. I said, well, why not? Other people bring other parts all the time. And uh, well, you know, that's true. Let's just make sure that everything is okay. Let's inspect it. Doesn't smell like gas, is it clean? And so yeah, it's all bubble wrap. Let's open it up and everything was all cleaned up. Um, thanks to Pablo or Mang Atong from the Philippines. He owned this. He's one of the 
known uh, Toyota gearheads from way back when, very old school with Toyotas and Mitsubishis. I've heard of people bringing wheels onto planes. <laughs> I've heard of people bringing other parts like strut tower bars and little things that you get when you go to Tokyo Auto Salon. But the fact that you put the whole engine and all its components in different luggages that makes me laugh. I love that so much. That's such a good story. So tell us a little, little bit about the motor. So it's an actual Toyota 1.3 liter. Do you know how much power this makes? We haven't dynoed the car, but it's a lot of torque compared to my other motor. What's your guess? Uh, Maybe 130-ish, 140-ish. 130? Well, but is it because it revs pretty high? Or? The way it's set up, um, we measured the stock, head, uh, the stock cylinders and the walls from the other motor. And I think those are 0.74, these are 0.81s. So they're slightly larger, technically bored out, longer stroke, whatnot. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it feels a lot more powerful compared to my previous motor. Yeah, and this chassis is pretty light, right? Uh, the car is about 1,700 pounds. Stock weight is 17 and, and change. All right, so tell me about, oh, it's all T3, Techno Toy Tuning, yes. suspension components. Yes. Um, and you don't even have room for air cleaner here. No, that's still to be modified and I'm still debating if we're still gonna go fuel injection, but to keep it period correct with the, with the carburetors. Wow, uh, that is really, t uh, <laughs> in terms of clearance, like the air is just like right there. Huh. But, yeah, we, we have plans of reversing uh, a few things and uh, hiding everything in the back of the firewall so we can put air horns to make it look cooler. <laughs> what a cute little radiator too. Oh my God, that thing is so tiny. Still the stock radiator. Oh, it's so cool. And on hot days, I don't know if you guys are familiar, but obviously we still have the compressor. Oh, wow. So you still, still have AC. Blow. Yeah, it, it's running uh, cold air on those hot days. It's cool because it's completely separate. Yes. Too. It doesn't need to be in front of the radiator or anything. Wow. One of the things, first thing I noticed is how extensive this cage is. I mean, the fact that you have door bars and all of this gussetting. Tell me about the cage. Well, the cage was uh, built by a buddy of mine, AK Fabrications. We kind of brainstormed what we're going to be doing with the car and originally you know, I used to drag race quite a bit and trans transition over to circuit racing uh, once in a while. And I told him, well, I want to build something that's going to keep my son safe, uh, introducing him to the race scene. And we figured let's build, you know, a cage that's going to be pretty, pretty safe. Uh, God forbid anything happens, I know he's going to be safe. Um, I also added the rear seat. The rear seat and the cage, it actually goes through the rear seat because I have my daughter that comes with us all the time. Wait, how does she get back there? <laughs> she enters from, from the trunk coming oh, in. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, all right, so she enters from the trunk back there. Yes. Oh, because I was thinking otherwise she would have to go through here. Yeah, no, it, yeah, she wouldn't fit, yeah. she wouldn't fit. Oh, that's pretty cool. So you even have seatbelts and stuff back there. Yes. I was wondering why you have a back seat because there's a cage and even to the point where you had to make upholstery, um, so it kind of, surrounds the cage. I guess the cage just goes through the seat. That but that's correct. pretty cool that you even thought of just carrying more passengers. Yeah, and it, it's a family uh, family event. You know, uh, keep the kids exposed to, to cars, make sure that they are, they're able to uh, enjoy it as well as, you know, myself. Uh, Want to make sure that they're aware of it and safety, safety is a concern. It's a good way to keep balance with the family because we all work on the car. I mean, my daughter helped out with, you know, installing some of the, the mattings, the Dynamat, uh, same with Julian. Um, oh, and, and by the way, as far as the engine goes, Julian actually put that motor together. My son was only 13 when he put it together. So thanks to Joel and Dennis uh, and Alan to guide him also. Um, Dennis has the Bible of uh, the specs. So... <laughs> Yeah. We made sure everything's all torqued. So Dennis, we, we kind of call him our uncle, right? So Dennis, <laughs> we had a chance to check out his shop. Uh, he is awesome. The cars that he builds and the knowledge that he has, he's, he's my favorite. It's so cool. That's why we had a chance to feature his uh, Mitsubishi a couple weeks back. But uh, I, I like this steering wheel too. Thank you. Uh, it, it's a Rapfix quick release. 
uh, with the tilt. Uh, it's it's easier to use, and instead of lugging the um, the steering wheel and taking it off with the quick release, all we have to do is just flip it up, and it stays there. Yeah, and that's an extension. That's an extension, so you can change the signal because I've never because seen the, that before. The style of the wheel. Without the extension, it's difficult if you wanted to keep your, your hand on. I like that. I've never seen that before. So how old is your son right now? Uh, Julian will be 16 uh, in a couple of weeks, actually, on the 21st. So he's going to be able to drive this soon. Yes. He just needs to get his license and all good. Thank goodness we were able to actually take the whole the car and all my you know, both of my kids on the track at AAA Speedway. Julian actually drove this uh, on the track with my daughter in the back. Good job on this. When we get a chance, let's let's go for a little rip in this thing. Definitely, for yeah. sure. All right, Angelo, I, somehow uh, I convinced him to let me drive it in the canyon, so we're gonna get in it. Uh, I, I am a big Toyota guy. I love old school cars, but I don't have an old school Toyota. I have an old school Datsun, so I'm actually kind of curious to see how this thing drives. But in terms of motor, it's crazy. 1.3 liter, huh? Yep, 1.3. Huh. The little engine that could, or that can, that can. <laughs> I like the door panels too. I didn't even notice that. Thank you. All right, let's let's get in this baby. Let's get in this bad. Oh, that's a. Oh, sorry, I moved here. No, no, it's okay. Ready? We're ready. Cool. <laughs> oh, you gotta pump yeah. up. More? Pump up, yeah. Pump up, go. There you go. Wait. So what year is this again? Eighty-one. Eighty-one. You'll, you'll feel the torque, you'll feel the, you'll know when to shift. Oh, manual steering, <laughs> manual steering. You know it. Wait, so this is rear wheel drive? It is rear wheel drive. Wow, okay. I keep forgetting that. It feels like a go-kart. It is. It's a little mini go-kart. Oh my go god. 1,700 pounds? Yes. <laughs> oh. This is pretty cool. So what was the original motor out of this car? Uh, the original motor is still a 4K. Um, that's the engine block on this 4K. Uh -huh. And it still have the 4K, but it's just a little worked up motor. Uh, with the TRD valves and the heads, uh, and it's stroked. Uh, it does have bigger pistons compared to the stock. But that, the, so the original motor was only maybe 50 horsepower. Yeah, a little over 50 horsepower on uh -huh. the original motor. Was that also 1.3 liter? It's also 1.3 liter. Uh, I think I believe it got 51 miles per gallon. Wow, it's pretty like good. That. So this is a five-speed transmission. Yeah, it's a five-speed. Yes. Wow. Well, five speed. We can downshift on that turn or take it up a little higher. It feels, <laughs> it feels like a go a go kart. I was gonna say golf cart, but that's not that far off. Yeah, I see why you like it, and it's kind of interesting. Like, it feels like a race car for the street because of the cage and everything, and you can really hear the fuel pump. That fuel pump is pretty oh, loud. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It, it's fun in the track too. We had some uh, track time. Not too crazy, but we we had some fun on the track, taking some turns and. Uh, well, when, so when you when, when you take this to the track, I mean you're pretty much full throttle all the oh, time. Yeah. It is, it's full throttle as long as the uh, the the car is moving, engine is moving, water is flowing, it's all good. Uh -huh. It just does not like to be sitting in still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty cool. Man, your family, it's a family project, huh? It's a family affair. Yeah. You guys did a really good job. Thank you. It's a lot more fun going downhill than going uphill. <laughs> it sounds good going uphill, though. Thank you. The brakes are pretty good. Yeah, yeah they, they feel good. And once it gets going, once it's warmed up, 
we still gotta rejet it for the higher ribs. Oh, okay. So what what's the spring rate on it? It's pretty stiff, huh? It's for a light stiff. car. It's very stiff. I'm not sure. I think it's 300, if I remember correctly. 300 all around? All the way around. Wow, that's pretty stiff. Huh. I was advised by somebody else that I need to go stiffer. Uh, really? Yeah. Why? For as long, if it's dedicated for track, yes. Okay. We can soften up the, uh, the shocks too. We have the adjustable shocks if we need to. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun because you, you really can floor it all the time. And I can't believe how connected I feel you know, to the road because it's so lightweight. It just doesn't weigh that much at all. And that's the uh, the beauty of the Starlet. You really feel connected when you're driving it. Yeah. I couldn't imagine what this was like driving as a stock car. <laughs> Super slow. Really slow. Very, very slow. It's an economy box. <laughs> It'll handle it. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> that intake noise is actually a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah. It really is like a go-kart. I just can't <laughs> believe how lightweight it feels. It's like point and steer wherever you want to go. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fun. Really good job. As for a home-built project, it's it's pretty cool. Thank you. I do have to say. Oh, look at this guy. But once he gets more power, and, and I'm really leaning towards a rotary. Slot, oh, really? I have a rotary motor that's ready to slop in here. A turbo uh, bridge port. <laughs> What is first gear top out at? Eh, 25, 2025, I mean, more or less. Wow. You feel it. Yeah. It just won't be two in the carburetor. We'll get more revs out of it. Right. I don't have the correct jets, especially the altitude. Right. I, I like the way how you, you're rev matching. That's exactly oh, yeah. what we do. <laughs> That's how you drive this thing, you yeah. know? Yeah, you have to. That was pretty cool. It, it was interesting to kind of be able to drive a, almost like a period correct car that you you were around obviously when these were um, kind of these were the things to modify. When they first came out, I was 11 years old, 1981. So yeah, they were the economy boxes back then in the 80s. Not too many uh, too many years. Uh, I think maybe two years that uh, they actually uh, produced it here in the states. So very limited. I, it's, it, I do have to say, I really like the fact that you guys, as a family, modified it for it to be period correct. So thank you again. We definitely have to feature your Mini as well as your RX3. Thank you. Thank you. And again, appreciate it, everyone. Peace. <laughs>